Hello students, in this video we're going to quickly explore the idea of fulfillment in the scriptures. So the idea of fulfillment is found in the New Testament itself and in the mouth of Christ. The Greek word for it is pleeru. And so Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane is talking to the other disciples after one of them has tried to defend him and prevent him from being arrested by cutting off the, high, the ear of the high priest's servant. Jesus says, but then how would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen in this way? So he himself sees in, in the scriptures this idea of fulfillment. And when Jesus says the scriptures, he's not talking about the New Testament. He's talking about the Old Testament. Because when Jesus is walking around the earth, the New Testament doesn't exist yet. You know, it's the action is still unfolding and it'll only be written a number of years later. So what is this idea of fulfillment? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas has some helpful um, thoughts on fulfillment. And in fact, he says there are really two senses of the word fulfillment. Now, the first type of fulfillment is where there's some detailed prediction in the Old Testament that actually ends up happening in the New Testament. So it might be something like, oh, a virgin conceived and uh, bore a son. Um, you know, or the idea of Jesus being... Uh, when, when he's scourged and he doesn't, you know, yell at his uh, tormentors or anything like that. Well, that's a fulfillment of Isaiah 53. In Isaiah 53, we hear, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The, cha the chastening for our well-being fell upon him. And by his scourging, we are healed. So it talks about you know, things that, that happened to Christ in a very specific way, that he was pierced for our transgressions, that he was scourged for our healing. Later, Isaiah will talk about how, like a lamb to the slaughter, he was led away and he opened not his mouth. So Christ is, is silent before his tormentors. So that's one sense of fulfillment. We even get it with the crucifixion in Psalm 22, when uh, the psalmist talks about uh, them uh, casting lots for my garments. Well, that actually happens while Jesus is being crucified. What do guys do? They're gambling to see who's going to get his cloak. So there we have the first example of fulfillment. The second is where some process begun in the Old Testament is brought to completion or perfection in the New Testament. So this is a, an even deeper sense of fulfillment. Perhaps one good example of this is Jesus on the cross saying, It is finished. And then he bows his head and he gives up his spirit. He dies. And so what Jesus is, is pointing to here is that in the entire Old Testament, since Genesis and the fall, God has been working out the salvation of humankind. And lots of different steps along the way, you know, there's, there's the patriarchs, there's the giving of the law and Moses, you have uh, the time of the kings and then the prophets. You know, so all this stuff is, is going on and it's, it's trying to bring about this reform in, in Israel and it's all pointing towards something towards this great work of God that's going to happen in the future. And it's on the cross, when Jesus lays down his life out of love for the world, that this is all brought to completion, that this is a, this is a process that's been happening, and it only reaches perfection in the New Testament. And that, says St. Thomas, is the second sort of fulfillment.